Greetings, everybody! We're back with Undertale. Um, if I uh, saw in that fast forward, uh, I went back to Hotland because I thought, hey, they might be over here instead because it's the same um, same place. And uh, I was right. Because I didn't get any enemies, any encounters in um, the core. So here we go! Oh. So these are the two last ones, and with this, we can finally continue and get to... Nice, that was perfect. And we went up a love level. Level of execution. Yay! Oh wow, we need so much more now. So, with that, we should be done. Let's just check on the save point to be sure. Determination. Oh? Oh? Okay, there we go. Nice. Everything is correct. All the time now, please. Yeah, most likely. It's so nice that um, between the last episode and this one, I am still recording. It's the same session. And so um, I don't have to do anything special. I just stop talking. I say goodbye, stop talking, just play the game, uh, try to find the remaining ones. And when I found them, boom, start the commentary. Don't have to do shit other than playing the game. I like that. It's nice. I like doing ses sessions. It reminds me of the time um, in the very, very beginning of my commentary, uh, which was back in November 2009, that I did one episode at a time. And I mean the whole process for each episode. So freaking stupid. Very, very stupid. And then I finally discovered that, hey, you can do sessions and just divide them up in parts. And just end and start every part with hello and goodbye. Uh, but what I did in... Um, later on in 2013 with my Resident Evil Remake series that I did a session, but I didn't divide... I mean, I didn't say goodbye and hello at every part. I just played like a live stream. I played for one and a half hour, you know, in a row, and then just cut up the parts. So um, most of the episodes started and ended without anything. Just boom, it's over. And now, looking back at it, it kind of worked. Because when the, when the series is over, when you have all the parts there and you have a YouTube playlist, it works perfectly. Just continues, boom, 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 and at the start and end of every session, there is a hello and a goodbye. So it still works in that way, but when releasing the episodes and people waiting for the parts, that's not so fun. That a part just begins right away and ends with, you know, no hello and goodbye. So I think the way I'm doing Undertale is my favorite to just... Do a session, but record parts with a timer telling me how much I am at this current part. And, um, yeah. You get it, boy? Now let's go! I'm so fucking ready for this shit! My, my... Yeah, so you finally arrived. After our first meeting, I realized something ghastly. You're not just a threat to monsters, but humanity as well. Oh my, that's an issue. You see, I can't be a star without an audience. And besides, there are some people I want to protect. Ha ha ha, eager as always, eh? But don't touch that dial, there's something you haven't accounted for. As any true fan would know, I was first, first created as a human eradication robot. It was only after becoming a star that I was given a more photogenic body. However, those original, original functions have never been truly removed. Come any closer and I'll be forced to show you my true form. Fine then. Ready? It's showtime! Whoa! Oh my god! Look at that! That's not the Metaton I was... Expecting? Is he still invulnerable? No, okay. 90 attack, 9 defense. That's almost nothing. Dr. Alphys' greatest invention. Stage lights are blaring. Uh, oh wow, I didn't get my healings. I didn't get the legendary girls. I'm so stoop. Oh wow, he didn't attack me. So we only have 7 healings. We can't flee. 
Fine, let's try it out. Let's see what happens. Nice. Holy fuck! <laughs> Guess you don't want to join my fan club. Nine defense. But no, what? No! I wanted that would that was building up to be so fucking epic, like the coolest boss fight with Manaton ever. Uh. Wait, what if I spared him? Oh, I want to try. Quitting. I'm quitting. Uh. I want to see what happens when you spare him. But I guess the same thing because oh wow, I went up a level again. Holy shit! Am I at max level? Now well, that's insane. He was worth a lot of XP. This is so crazy! I, I just can't wrap my head around it. Determination. Uh, okay. S s no, there's no point to save. It was so easy. But yeah, it, you know, when I checked on him, he didn't attack. If I spared him, he wouldn't attack. So I guess nothing different would have happened. Okay, let's continue. Man, this game is really surprising me. Sometimes I'm expecting a really hard boss fight, like Undyne, the Undying. And then we get fucking Metaton Neo. I was like, holy shit, we got then a different music and all that. And boom, he be dead. How much did I do? Like 4 million? 400,000? I can't remember. But damn. Damn, son. This game is crazy. And this elevator is long as shit. Oh no, 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 don't do this. Don't. Oh, it doesn't say anything. Uh, not don't save. Uh, wow, okay, if they're gonna play the Undertale song, that's gonna be in my sweet spot. I can't take it. It's in use. Isn't working. Well, because un the Undertale song is my favorite in this game, and kind of one of my all-time favorite songs, actually. It's... It's gorgeous. I love it. And if they play it right now, with the enemies telling the story, and I'm killing them, I'm not gonna be able to take that. Okay, okay, here we go. I'm expecting the song, I'm expecting the monsters to be like, don't, don't attack us, we're at the super safe place, and the, the sad music, but I'm still killing them and they're begging for mercy. That's what I'm expecting, but... <clears throat> in order to do this, I'm gonna just fucking get rid of all my feelings! I'm empty inside. Oh? Oh yeah, it's that song, uh, Shocked, I believe, when you meet Asgore the first time. Okay, this is looking to be... Yeah, yeah, save, okay, new home. Um, okay, this music works as well. Uh, shit. I'm gonna be prepared now, so get rid of the worst healings, which would be junk food. Instant noodles, I don't know what they do. Uh, legendary hero. Glam burger is great. Spider donut is nice. Instant noodles, have no idea. Uh, butterscotch pie. Probably. No, I'm gonna save that for the very, very last fight. I don't care if I die on the last fight. I just want to find, you know, the hardest encounter and then I'm gonna bring the butterscotch pie. Seems like the best idea. I've played enough RPG games to know this shit. So, another legendary hero. Or maybe not. Still save it for the last But We can go back and buy more. Uh, yeah, instant noodles. Let's go with that. Save. Okay, here we go. Let's go, let's go. I'm ready for this, I'm ready. He leaves them in the kitchen and the hallway. Oh? So we're gonna meet them here? Okay. My... Oh, my bed. His bed. Asriel and Crimps. My drawing. Wait, why is there red text? He does, it, there's no red text when he talks about his bed. Like my, it's my character talking. But with this one, there is red text. Now that I don't understand. Our clothes. Why only this one? Because it's flowy flower something? Knife inside the box. How do you know about that? No. <laughs> Take it. 
You're carrying too much. Yeah, sure. Heart-shaped locket inside. We might use it. Dusty toys. Okay. Right! I forgot about this! Um... In this session, in the beginning, I wanted to talk about the theory I've had. But now it seems very... Unappropriate to do it. This is not the time or the place, but we should do it before we go too far. Hello? Howdy, Crims! You finally made it home! Remember when we used to play here? <laughs> Boy, today's gonna be just as fun! Uh, you took the key and put it on your phone's key chain. Oh shit, I'm not prepared for this because I wanted to formulate my theory before starting the session. Uh, this is not gonna work out. The entries are always the same. Today is also a good day or something? It's just a chair. It's a king-sized bed. Macaroni art of a flower for King Dad. Nothing useful. There it is again. Oh, still has that sweater. It's a trophy. No snuzzle champs, 98. It's Dogrisa. Dogami. Maybe it's me. Crims. Yeah, exactly. That's... That's uh, what my theory was, kind of. But I'm gonna go into depth very soon. Oh. <laughs> I remember when I first woke up here in the garden. I was so scared. I couldn't feel my arms or legs. My entire body had turned into a flower. Mom! Dad! Somebody help me! I called out. <laughs> but nobody came. <laughs> okay, before we continue, save. And let me talk about what I had in mind. So if you want to skip this part, go ahead. Okay, so... In the very beginning of this playthrough, Flowey said, Crims, at the end, before we re before we did the true reset, he said Crims. And I was like, huh, he talked to me as if I were Crims. That doesn't make sense. Um, but it does. So, here it is. Um, <laughs> brain fart. And this music is distracting, kind of, but no worries. Let's see here. So, here it is. Um, okay, so when when uh, Crims died in the very beginning, you know, when um, Crims fell down in the opening cutscene, Asriel found him, and they lived there. Uh, Crims got sick, and then Asriel took his soul, um, and carried his body to the village and placed him there at the flower bed. And uh, then the humans attacked Asriel, and he had the power to, you know, defend himself, but he didn't do it. So he got extremely hurt to the point he was um, dying. And after leaving Crims there, he went back to the underground, and he collapsed in the throne room or somewhere, and his... Um, his body just, you know, evaporated. Dust all over the place. Asriel was dead, with Krim's soul inside. And so, Krim's soul is still in the underground. Because, as it said in the library, <laughs> that humans' souls have... The humans have proven that they don't need their bodies for their souls to exist. I mean, there's, their soul can exist outside of their body. And so, Crim's soul was still in the underground. Um, and Asriel's, um, you know, dust was um, spread on the flowers, and Asriel became Flowey. And that's what he has talked about right there. Like, Mom, Dad, somebody help me. Flowey was talking as, you know, he is Asriel. Mom, Dad, Toriel, and Asgore. So, you know, Flowey is Asriel. Um, and Crim's soul is still here. And so, what my theory was, um, continuing on this, is that um, when you play the true pacifist, you are Frisk. You fall down, and you are Frisk, and you get to know that at the end of the game, because you didn't do anything wrong. You were perfect, so you are Frisk. And Crims did not influence you at all. And that's what happens here. I first thought that when you do the true genocide, you are Crims instead. But that doesn't make much sense, because 
you know, way back 10 years ago or even more, I don't know. Uh, Crims fell down, he got sick, he, he, he died, and then Asriel carried his body. So I can't be the same Crims, I'm still Frisk. Because in the opening cutscene, uh, uh, Crims had a one-striped shirt. Frisk, right in front of us, does not have um, a one-striped shirt. He has two. So I am Frisk, but Crims' soul is controlling me or influencing me. Or maybe, maybe Frisk died when he fell down and Crims' soul entered Frisk's body and we are somewhat crims in Frisk's body. Maybe. But I don't think Frisk died at the beginning. In some way, Crims' soul is controlling. So that's why I am crims now. Flowey senses it, Flowey can see it, the other, the other monsters, they don't see me as a human. I'm empty inside. So... Yeah, I think that was about it. There is uh, some more things uh, to it, but I I don't want to stay and talk too much about it. We might as well just continue, and that might remind me. So, let's continue. Oh, uh, right. The calls are still warm. Nothing useful. What's with the red text? Maybe that uh, goes with my theory. When it's the red text, it's crims. When it's the white one, it's Frisk. I don't know. Doesn't seem like anyone uses it. Seems like gardening tools. No, those seem like fireplace tools. Eventually, the king found me, crying in the garden. I explained what uh, had happened to him. Then he held me, Prims. He held me with tears in his eyes, saying, there, there. Everything is going to be alright. He was so emotional. But for some reason, I didn't feel anything at all. Let's take the key! My phone's keychain. Stove top. It's a trash can. It's full of crumbled up recipes for butterscotch pie. White fur stuck in the drain. No chocolate. Yeah, there must be something to it. I mean, it's quite obvious, but... No chocolate. Is that Crim's old thoughts? From his soul? <sighs> it's a golden flower. Okay, let's continue. I unlocked the chain. Red text. The date I came here. Yeah, okay, so this is Crim's. There we go. Uh, the red text is Crim's. The day I came here. My soul. But I am in Frisk's body. I soon realized I didn't feel anything about anyone. My compassion had disappeared. And believe me, it's not like I was trying. I wasted weeks with that stupid king, vainly hoping I would feel something. But it became too much for me. I ran away from home. Eventually, I reached the ruins. Inside, I found her, Crims. I thought of all people, she could make me feel whole again. She failed. <laughs> yeah, she did. Um, you know, in the beginning of the game, Toriel fires yeah, a fireball at uh, Flowey. I realized that those two were useless. I became despondent. I just wanted to love someone. I just wanted to care about someone. Crims, you might not believe this, but I decided I wasn't worth living anymore. Not in a world without love. Not in a world without you. So, I decided to follow in your footsteps. I would erase myself from existence. And you know what? I succeeded. Erase myself from existence? Follow my footsteps? Because I died? Yeah. But... He succeeded. I mean, Crims died. That's how he disappeared from existence. Flowey didn't die. But as I left this mortal coil, I started to feel apprehensive. If you don't have a soul, what happens when you... Something primal started to burn inside of me. No, I thought. I don't want to die. Then I woke up. 
like it was all just a bad dream. I was back at the garden, back at my safe point. There we go, hopefully we're gonna get more story about the safe points. Interested, I decided to experiment. Again and again, I brought myself to the edge of death. At any point, I could have let this world continue on without me. But as long as I was determined to live, I could go back. Amazing, isn't it, Crims? I was amazed, too. Hmm. At first, I used my powers for good. I became friends with everyone. I solved all their problems flawlessly. Their companionship was amusing for a while. As time repeated, people proved themselves predictable. What would this person say if I gave them this? What would they do if I said this to them? Once you know the answer, that's it. Oh wow, this is exactly what I've been thinking. That's all they are. This is exactly what I'm thinking, you know, replaying the game, and they just do the same thing. They become predictable, and that that's when it starts to be boring, and that's what drives you to finally do something different. To murder them, to get a different outcome. That's what true genocide is all about. Maybe. It all started because I was curious. Curious what would happen if I killed them. Yeah. I don't like this, I told myself. I'm just doing this because I have to know what happens. Exactly, this is the exact same reason I'm doing this series in the first place. Ha! <laughs> what an excuse! You of all people must know how liberating it is to act this way. At least we're better than those sickos. Let's stand around and watch it happen. Just pathetic people that want to see it, but are too weak to do it themselves. I bet someone like that's watching right now, aren't they? Watching, oh wow. What a fourth wall break. Nowadays, even that's growing, grown tiring. You understand, Prims. I've done everything this world has to offer. Wow, this fucking game goes way out of the box. It really, it even goes into the feeling of replaying a world, replaying a game, and it just is the same all over the all over the... Oh, wow. I've read every book, I've burned every book, I've won every game, I've lost every game. I've appeased everyone, I've killed everyone. Sets of numbers, lines of dialogues, I've seen them all. But you, you're different. I never could predict you, Crims. When I saw you in the ruins, I didn't recognize you. I thought I could frighten you, then steal your soul. I failed. And when I tried to load my save file, it didn't work. Crims, your determination... Somehow, it's even greater than mine. Okay, so both Asriel, Muflawi, and me have the power to save. Because I don't think the other monsters have that. Me and Flowey are very special here. It's only with Flower, Flowey that I have talked about resetting the game, uh, wiping out everyone's memories, starting over, talking with everybody, killing everybody. Everything that is normally, typically, outside of the game's boundaries. You know, saving, loading, replaying the game. Normally that's um, outside of the game's box. But only me and Flowey are the characters that have done this. And right, that's... Here we go. This is uh, my... Another detail of my theory. Is that... I, the player, am Crims. That's what uh, my theory was. That... Uh, exactly. There we go. Now I connected it. So, I am Crims. Not the character you see. That's Frisk. But the, I... I, the human who is playing, who is controlling the game, who is pressing true reset, who is saving the game, who is loading it, who is replaying this world. I am Crims. I, na I even named myself Crims. It's, I mean, the answer was there from the beginning, but you never think about that, do you? You don't play Legend of Zelda, name yourself your own name, and think that you, the player, are, is named that in this game's lore. No, you think that that's the character you're playing, and that is the case with Ocarina of Time and all these Zelda games and all the others. You name the character that you play. 
like in World of Warcraft. You name the character that you play. In this game, you name yourself. You are part of the game, not Frisk. I mean, not the only Frisk. Frisk is part of the game, but you, yeah, you see, that's what my theory was, that I am Crims all along. How did you get back to the ruins from here? Wait, I know. She must have taken you when she left. And decided to give you a proper burial, rather than hanging out in the basement forever. But why then? What made you wake up? Did you hear me calling you? Wake up. Hmm. It doesn't matter now. I'm so tired of this, Grims. I'm tired of all these people. I'm tired of all these places. I'm tired of being a flower. Grims, there's just one thing left I want to do. Let's finish what we started. Let's free everyone. Then, let's... Let them see what humanity is really like. That despite it all, this world is still kill or be killed. Hmm. You know what, this is um, really, really great. Then, well, I had been entertaining a few ways to use that power. <laughs> but seeing you here changed my mind, Dreams. I think if you're around, just living in the surface world doesn't seem so bad. Hmm, he finally found some meaning. They find some meaning in, you know, continuing and living. We don't even need to leave to get uh, them this time. The king has six of them locked away. I've tried hundreds of ways to get him to show me them, but he just won't. Crims, I know he'll do it for you. Why am I telling you all of this? Crims, I said it before. Even after all this time, you're still the only one that understands me. You won't give me any worthless pity. <laughs> I won't. Creatures like us wouldn't hesitate to kill each other if we got in each other's way. Oh shit. Really? I mean... I wouldn't... Maybe I would. I don't want to kill you, Flower. You're my only friend. So that's... So that's why... Oh. Oh. Huh. Huh. What's this feeling? Why am I shaking? Hey, Grims, no hard feelings about back then, right? Uh, hey, what are you doing? Back off! Oh shit. Oh shit. But nobody came. I've changed my mind about all this. This isn't a good idea anymore. You should go back, Crims. This place is fine the way it is. Stop making that creepy face! This isn't any- this isn't funny. We got a sick sense of humor. What the fuck is he- Is someone doing this to him? What is doing- why is he feeling this way? Is it Sans? Is- is- is there someone doing something? Oh wow, of course we're gonna meet Sans here. Last corridor. Use the box. Yes, yes, yes. Fuck you, Sans. You're gonna... Know what? Let's go with this. It must be Sans. Is he doing this? I'm ready for you. You know what? I'm ready for him in the next episode. So thank you everybody for watching. This episode has been uh, fantastic. This game is... This game is just wow. It really goes outside of the box in a way I've never experienced in a game before. <laughs> Look at that. It looks like two people fishing on the pillar. It's like he's sitting there, that's his hat at the top, and he's holding a fishing rod outwards. How cute. Okay, see you next time, everybody. Have a great day.